desire and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit Never ceases. 
listen Call for songs of loud space yeah. Teach me some melodious song Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mountain fixed up on it Mouths of lyre, teeming love. Oh, my redeeming love. Is here the by thy help I come, and I hope I lack a pleasure. Safely to arrive at home Jesus sought me when a stranger Wandering from the throne of the God He to rescue me from danger Interposed his precious blood
Well, good morning. Welcome to Wesley Church this morning. All around this circle, I see so many, man, just awesome faces. So good to be here this morning in the presence of God. Amen. Could we stand and worship together? Just sing this out. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Would you close your eyes with me? Heavenly Father, we come to you today to give you all of our worship. to meet you here in this place. You are a miracle worker, our promise keeper. I pray that we bring joy to your heart as we sing. Just declare these words, these prayers of our hearts as we sing this morning. Center our minds on you. Take away all the distractions that might keep us from worshiping you freely today. We come this morning, Jesus. We just come. Amen. You are here moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here working in this place. I worship you, I worship you, sing that again, you are here, moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're working in this place, I worship you. God, I worship you. He's a way maker. Because you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you, you are here, healing every life, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're turning lives around, I worship you. Worship you, he's mending. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Cause you are way make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are.
don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. You're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Come on, never stop. That's who he is. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Never stop, never stop working. Never stop, you never stop working. Even you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. You are. declare every part and everything of all that you are this morning through song through prayer through the word God we are here to serve you and you alone it's in your name we pray amen So my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit. Spirit, you. 
you alone. out of praise if you're a child of God this morning. Amen. Because I'm no longer I'm a child of God. Proclaim that. Well, I'm no longer a Because I am a child of God. One more time with every voice. 
I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. No, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. Father. You could just give him thanks in your own words this morning, Jesus. Thank you. We thank you, God, that you've given us freedom, that you call us children of the one true living God. We are no longer slaves to fear. God, nothing on this earth can take away your love for us. Thank you for your love this morning, Jesus. As Pastor Blake would come this morning, may you just put our splashing blessing on the message, the words that you've laid on his heart. May you keep us in the spirit of worship as we flow out of this time and into the scripture, God. May you reach us in a new and a powerful way today. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. You art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen you may be seated And Miss Carrie, she's over here. She's ready for you to go to her, your class. Everybody, welcome to Wesley today. We're glad you're here. If this is uh, the first time, we, last week we had the, the seating like this. If this is your first time, we're sorry if we confused you, but hopefully you enjoyed the worship, fun to, and, and enjoyable to watch the worship of our brothers and sisters. Uh, I realize in my case, it's way more fun to look at the back of my head than the front, so maybe you found it that way, but I think it's great to see brothers and sisters worship together. So we are going to share in this format, if you will, of seating um, for two more weeks, and then we have bluegrass. Sunday coming on the 29th, so we will have everything facing that way as we share together on Bluegrass Sunday, uh, the 29th, and so we invite you to join us in that, and that will happen at two services, the 915 and the 11. Adult Sunday School is taking place right now, 915 out in the morning. And, and go there. Young adults, please check the bulletin. Ladies, check the bulletin. There's retreats coming up for young adults and, and the ladies. Uh, the young adult is just in a couple weeks. You want to check that out. Also, our annual Samaritan's Purse ministry is taking place starting now, and it's not till November that we collect, but we want to let you know about that. And there's plenty of vegetables in the, in the garden for you, and so we offer those to you uh, as well. This morning, as we look at God's Word, uh, for those of you who may be a guest, and if you are, we'd love you to fill out one of our young ones. would like to have a note guide today. They're available to you uh, with the guest card. Uh, we're continuing looking at spiritual warfare. Uh, we looked at the full armor of God taken from Ephesians 6. And then last week we looked at prayer and the impact of that in our spiritual warfare. Today we're going to look at what it means to be identified in Christ and, and how that impacts our spiritual warfare with the enemy and with who uh, he wants to bring us, how he wants to bring us down. And we're going to share in Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, next week, we're going to look at some strongholds. Some of us in our journey, have we're doing really well in all these areas, but there may be a stronghold that, that we have, and we have to bring down that stronghold. So we're going to look at that, and then just standing firm the, the next week, and then we'll have closed out our sermon series on the uh, spiritual warfare that we have, where that battle between bless us. 
And so we're, we're looking at that today. Uh, so as we look at these things, I, I'm going to read the entire chapter of Ephesians 1. And I ask you to follow and listen uh, carefully. It is a powerful chapter of Scripture that it tells us who we are. You're going to hear, I I didn't even count it up, but probably ten times it says the words, in Christ, in Him, or by Him. And that's who we are in Christ. So let me share this with you. Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, we're going to begin and do the whole thing. Now, I listed on your note guide 3 to 23, but I'm going to uh, read the first two verses as well because it tells us about the author and to whom this is written. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, to the saints in Ephesus, the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given to given us in the one he loves. Now notice in your scripture it says the one and the one is capitalized. That would be in the one he loves, in Christ, the one he loves. Uh, and then he goes on, he says, in him we have redemption from his, uh, uh, through, redemption through his blood for the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavishes on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times uh, will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. In him we were all also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him, who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in, in Christ, might be for the praise of his glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which you have, uh, to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints and his incomparable great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from dirty power and dominion and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be the head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Might there be a blessing for us in the reading and hearing of God's word uh, today. Wow, is there a lot there. As we uh, look back over the past couple of weeks, some of you know, oh my, we might be here till about 6.30 tonight if I do the same pace that we do there. But now this is a foundation for us. This is a foundation of who we are and our identity, how we got our identity in Christ and what that identity means for us. As we look, I'm no longer a slave to fear. That's part of our identity. The fear, the anger, the doubt, the addictions, the materialism, the infidelity, the self-righteousness, the arrogance, the negativity, all of those things Jesus has redeemed us from, and we no longer need to be identified by those things. 
receiving and believing we identify ourselves with who Christ is. Now, here's one of the problems that many people in the church have, have issue with. They have an identity crisis. How many of you have heard that term, identity crisis? Usually, it's when we see one of our classmates, kids, I'm 64, so when we see someone in their 50s or 60s, they're driving around in identity crisis. He's, he's having a crisis. How many of you have ever said or joked with somebody about that? Uh, are you having a crisis in your life? Um, see, and so that's, it was a catchphrase uh, and, and joked about it oftentimes. Um, and, and also, there were people back, seriously, back in the day, um, they, they wanted to identify themselves. They wanted to find and have identification, and they would pay psychoanalysts all this money to figure out who they were. See, you and I don't have to worry about that. You know why? We of the king. We, we just sang it. We're soldiers of the cross. That's who we are. We're the king's kids. We're the king's kids. We're children of God, the king's kids. We are people that are walking around by the power of the Holy Spirit. We are filled as we receive Jesus as Savior, as we've received him as Lord and, and, and given him the throne of our hearts, that, that we are filled with the Holy Spirit. Not in anger or, or arrogance or anything, but just in humility, quite honestly, as we read all that, it's God's doing that we are where we are. So, let's talk about this new creation that we are for just a moment or two, and it's the gospel. I just want to remind you, for those of you, again, that may be guests today or haven't heard, uh, been here where I've spoken a lot, I talk about salvation, I talk about the gospel and the good news of Jesus a whole lot. Somewhere during the service, I usually say, if you've never made Jesus your Savior, uh, gang, when would, t when would the day be to do that? Today would be a really good day to do that. Um, and so we talk about that, but, but here's the identification. Born into a fallen world, we all have flaws, we all have sin, um, and, and we can do good, but, but the bottom line is we struggle with sinning and falling and failing, and, and we have that. And sin separates us from God. But because of what Christ does as we are in Christ, we are reconnected to our Heavenly Father by the forgiveness of sins that comes by his death on the cross. I'm just giving you the gospel again. But God did not want to be separated from us. He wanted to have unity with us, so he sent Christ to die for us. And so we trust in the blood of Christ. We trust in his resurrection that we will have eternal life. At that moment, when we receive that, when we believe that, we become, as Paul writes to the church at Corinth, at Corinth the second time, he says this, Therefore, if any man, any woman be in Christ, they're a new creation, the old has gone, and the new has come. We are changed. We are transformed. There's an identity change from where we were part of the norms of this world and the culture which we're in, to the heart-changing transformation of our lives in Christ Jesus. And if we aren't careful or sometimes can have an identity crisis as a believer, who we are in, in Christ. Um, pro uh, problems sometimes often arise after that rush, that euphoria of being a follower of Christ. And so we end up with an identity crisis because in some way we've fallen and forgotten who we are and we've fallen back into the ways of the world. My goodness, I, the reason I share that with you is because some of you know my story pretty doggone well, that the first three and a half years of my walking with Jesus, I behaved. I didn't lose my temper for three and a half years, um, didn't say words, didn't, do, and, and, and behaved kind of thing. And then my early 20s hit and the wheels sort of came off. And for a moment, I lost my identity of who I was in Christ. And I found myself in some areas of my life reverting back to a stronghold, which I'll talk about next week, to a stronghold in my life where, where boy, I didn't see myself necessarily as the believer that I should be. And sometimes we fall back into our fears and our doubts and our habits and our immorality and our arrogance and laziness. And, and, and so we, we struggle. We don't see ourselves as truly uh, a, a new creation. There was a time uh, that, that sometimes we get in this crisis where we fall back. It's sort of like this. I had a, a wife call me one day and, and about a classmate who was not me. Because sending somebody, if they don't want to be there, that's, there's, there's, it's, it's, one, it's not a 
very much. It's not fun for me, and, and it, it pro- probably won't be received. So anyway, she, she talked to him, and the guy calls me, and, and he's an old classmate of, of mine. I was 42 at the time, um, and, and uh, six years as a pastor, and, and he, he said he wanted to, he'd meet with me because they were having major strife and, and because of some of his behaviors and so forth. And, and what had happened uh, as, as we talked I found something out about what he was into, and, and he struggled with alcohol and doing the bar scene and all this stuff, and she's home with the kids and, and, and that kind of thing. And I said to him, I said, I think that, that your biggest problem is the fact that you're acting at 42 like many of us did at 18 to 22. And, and he didn't see that. And, and so I tried to impress it again and say, I, I think there's a, a, a crisis, and I didn't say the words identity, but there was a crisis of that he wanted to revert back. All the responsibilities and all the things. How many of you have ever just wanted to get in your car and just drive? You know, it's just like, oh my goodness, all this I have on me. And there's a crisis in that. And, and he had a crisis in identifying that. Boy, does Satan ever play on that stuff. Our old way of thinking and deceiving us to continue to act as we once did. And then reinforces it. Then often, for the believer now, he often reinforces it. You know when we mess up? And we have that crisis. Then he says, see, I told you you were a terrible, rotten Christian. I I told you you were no good. Uh, I I told you that you're you're worthless to the kingdom kingdom of God. Um, And so there's a struggle to live out our life in Christ, in Christ. But we are new creatures in him. Now, let me say, are in this gathering. Um, see, some people right now look at their lives, um, your new creation, but, but you look at your life and you say, uh, I, I, I'm a good person and, and I'm going to church. And here you are, or there you are on the, the, the watching us. Um, uh, or maybe some of you are sitting here and you're going, oh man, I'm a bad person and I'm in church. Some of you right now might be thinking, I bet I'm the biggest sinner in the whole room. People come to church like that. Like, I am the worst person in the room. Some people might say, well, you know, I, I'm a nice person. I, I'm a nice person, but, but I have things I, I don't do well and all that. And then sometimes we look around and we go, man, those people are like spiritual saints, like spiritual superior to, a, to the rest of us. How many have ever felt like that? Sociology class, Dr. Boisco, my first semester at Millersville University back in the Stone Age. It's the fall of 1975. I walk in and we start having these sociology discussions. And you know what I realized? I was the dumbest guy in the room. And it didn't feel good. I was a student there um, with Dr. Boisco. Anyway, some of you might be sitting here right now and you feel that way that you've maligned yourself, that you're weak, that you're fleshly, that you're susceptible. And that's not true. That's not true. So what I want to do is I want to reinforce something with you today. I want you to know how God sees you in Christ, how the Lord looks at you and who you are right now in this place. Do you know what he calls, calls you if you've accepted Jesus as your Savior, as your Lord? No matter how dark your past, no matter how, how, how ugly maybe your present has been, he looks at you if you've received him as Savior and Lord, not with cheap grace, but with grace that you, that you are in fact a saint, that you're a saint, that he looks at you as you're a saint. Well, how many of you heard that expression? Well, there are no saints. But, but we are saints. That's what we are. That's who we are. Now, the word saint, and the only reason, because I read a commentary about it, it's, it's hagio is a word for saint in the Greek, and it means separated or holy. Wait a minute. God says this to us. Be holy, for I am holy. And we are called to holiness, that we are saints. But a lot of believers don't look at themselves like that. In fact, holy righteousness. I, I, I don't feel so powerful. I, I don't feel so great in, in those things. And so you and I, as followers of Christ, we need to recognize that, first of all, we have a new identity, and that when that crisis comes, we need to, to recover who we are in Christ. How many of you can say this? You know, I, I, I love the Lord, but I'm not always good. I do ugly things. 
You know what? I say things I shouldn't say. And then the thing is this. As Paul wrote in, in, in uh, Romans 7, what I want to do, I don't do. And what I don't want to do, that I do. Anybody want to just amen and say, you find yourself there? That's part of this Christian journey. And we say, I can't do it. I, I, can't, I can't walk this walk. I can't do what I, what I want to do, what, I, what God has for me um, to do. Well, I have really, 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 really good news for you here. You don't have to. How many times did we read in Christ, in him, in Christ, in him? I want to walk you through that passage very quickly, but, but let you know about how we recover our position as followers of Christ. Um, we sometimes get caught up in who we are and what we are, but that's not our identification. Our identification is who is Christ in us. Now, let's go back through for a minute. Let's look at verses 4 and 5. It says, we are here by his will, his will. And then in verse 6 and 7, it says, we are by his grace, by his grace. And then in verse 9, it says, his good pleasure. In verse 11, his purpose. Do you know that you're here for a purpose? Do you know that? That he has purposed your life right here and now. He has something for you in that. In your new identity as a follower of Christ, he has a purpose. Then he says this, you have power, but it's not your own power. It's his power. Verses 12 and 14 talk about his power. Verse 18 talks about his calling. It's his inheritance. In verse 18 also, his calling, his inheritance. Then if we'd have gone on to the next chapter, to chapter 2, in verse 4 it says it's about his love and it's about his workmanship in verse 10. It's about him, it's about him, it's about him, it's about him. I want to encourage you this afternoon or this evening at your quiet time, read that first chapter of Ephesians again because it's who you are in him. You're not a dirty, rotten scoundrel. You're a follower of the Savior. And in Him, in Christ, in Christ, we get to, to live this life. And we realize, let me read it for you, point, point, word by word. Once we, followers of Christ, start to realize who we are and whose we are, we begin to more faithfully, consistently become more like Jesus and less like the world because we repel the things of Satan. When we realize who we are, when we realize who we are in our identification in who we are in Christ. When we identify with Christ, when we live in him and we live like him. You know what? Here's what I really want to encourage you to do. I want to encourage you to think about your, wait a minute, you have eternity. If you've come to Christ, if you haven't today, it'd be a really good day to do that. But if you've come to Christ, we have an eternity awaits us. We have perfection that awaits us. We have a place where there's no temptation, no sin, and that awaits us. Man, we need to start enjoying our Boy, don't get that on film. <laughs> Completely the opposite. Not enjoying our sin. Wait, that was one of my friends once said this to me. You know the biggest thing about being a Christian? I can't enjoy my sin anymore. Yeah, okay, everybody let it go, let it go. Here we go. <laughs> but I want to encourage you to enjoy your faith. I want you to enjoy the, the, the relationship they have with Jesus. Let me tell you how it is. In, when I was uh, 0 to 17, those years grew to somehow be nice enough or good enough to merit heaven that I thought, oh my goodness, I go to church so that God may someday accept who I am. And it was like brutal. And then we had, and, and in our house, you had to go to Sunday school and church. And you had to sit through both of those. And, and, and that was just the duty you had to pay. And then you know what they would do at Memorial Church? Some, they would have Sunday night services. And you know what happened? I had to go Sunday night. Man, I thought that week I had everything counted for. Like, I, I'm pretty good. But you know, the crazy thing happened. The crazy thing happened after I got saved. Literally, the next Sunday, I could hardly wait to get to church to see what was going to happen. My new identity had taken over, and I couldn't wait to be there, to be in the fellowship of leaders, to hear what the anthem would be. Remember when the choir sang and we had anthems, and, and what the anthem would be, and, and the hymns we would sing, and the depths of the meaning of the words as we read them. It was crazy. And you know what I learned to do? I learned to enjoy my faith. The fact that my eternity is accounted for, man, just enjoy this. 
the, kids, this isn't supposed to be a penalty. This isn't supposed to be punishment. This is the blessing of being in the fellowship of believers. We have a new identity. Let's enjoy, let's enjoy our faith. The, the, the great, man, and see, we as believers, man, we can't be miserable because if we're miserable, a world's going to look at us and go, well, if that's what a Christian is, I don't want to be that. I'd much rather, what, enjoy my sin that I stumbled over a moment or two ago. But people, people of God, are you enjoying your faith? Read chapter one. This is who you are in him. No matter what Satan says, if Satan says you're lousy, you have this dark past, you have this hidden sin, excuse me, hidden sin, we're gonna look to break through that. We're looking to, at what the Holy Spirit of God can do for us. I want you to affirm your identity, re, recover your, your position. Recover your position and affirm who you are. I'm gonna do something, I don't know if I've ever done this before. I want you to repeat after me about six, seven things. I'm chosen by God. I am holy and blameless before him in the name of Jesus. I'm adopted through Christ. I'm a recipient of his grace and generosity. I'm redeemed. I'm valuable. I'm worthy. I've been bought with a price. I've been forgiven of all my sins. I've been given an inheritance. And I've been called to a purpose. That's who you are. That's who we are. That's what this is about. That we can enjoy it. Enjoy the faith that we have. And see, then it's so crucial in our daily living. A world wants to see that. I know it sounds like they don't want to, but man, when in brokenness, they want to see what it is that makes us tick. To, as we identify ourselves in Christ Jesus, we can live. When people see this, I know. What we live and how we carry out our daily lives testifies to who we are in Christ. This week at Bible study, Mike Sigmund uh, he repeated what somebody else said, and, and he didn't give who, who, I don't know who to give credit to for this, but he said this, whatever fills you controls you, and whatever fills you when pressure comes will spill out of you, control you. Whatever fills you, things of this world, desires, wishes, and wants will control you. That person that's caught up in addiction of gambling, that's going to control them. If it's substance abuse, it's going to control them. If, it's, if you're filled with bitterness, anger, hate, negativity, whatever fills you controls you. So you and I, what did we just read for the whole first chapter of Ephesians? In Christ, in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. Whatever fills you controls you. And then the second part, what, what's amazing, whatever, whatever fills you, when shaken, that's going to come out of you. Back to Pastor Mike Sigman. He's a spiritual director at Ronsville Camp Meeting. I remember at the end of camp a bunch of years ago now, he and I were the, like the last two to leave. And he said, Blake, I'm in terrible pain. I'm having this pain down my back. I, would you take me to the hospital? And I said, Sure, sure, I'll take you to the hospital. It's like 9.30 at night, there's no one around. And, and I said, yeah. And so he was writhing in my car. And, and I'm hauling him there. Um, and, and, I, and we decided that it might be better to meet the aunt. But he is in pain, he is in pain, big time in pain. So we get to the hospital, they take him in the emergency. He, he's laying there on a gurney and this, this gal comes. And I mean, I'd never seen, this guy is a, is a shirt and tie, just loves Jesus, just sound just oh, I've never seen him down I've never seen and he was rocking like oh he is and bam she hits him and gives him this shot and he's there writhing in pain and she hits him with a shot and he stopped he looked at her he said thank you and went back to writhing and I'm looking and I'm going oh my goodness do you know what all these years later he's the guy that said these words whatever fills you controls you Whatever fills you when you're shaken comes out of you. And I saw it in that moment. It's like, oh my goodness. 
brothers and sisters in Christ, you know what fills you? Notice I said brothers and sisters. What fills you? The Lord Jesus. No matter what Satan says to you, the Holy Spirit of God. We read it. You have been sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit of God. That's who we are. I don't care what your parents have said about you. I don't care what your spouse or ex-spouse has said about you. I don't really care about what the world says about you. Here's what God says about you. And he calls us to walk uprightly in that. Way back in the day, 28 years ago, they walked me into Wesley Church. I was wearing a, a blue suit and a tie. And as I walked up these steps... And I walked in, I thought, you know, these people from Wesley Church, they wanted a pastor. And what they got was a school teacher. And I thought, whoa, I'm not sure that's sort of the deal. Nothing wrong with school teachers. I mean, I loved it, but... And, and, and I walked in, and, and that Sunday, they said... The, the next Sunday, they said, uh, we haven't had communion for over, like, a year... And they said, would you do communion? So the first Sunday, first Sunday, I'm in the pulpit. We had communion. And I remember seeing these people that I knew from the community and Rollinsville came me. And I'm offering them, I'm offering them the elements and I'm going, oh my goodness. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I to offer these people the bread and the cup? A couple weeks later, it's probably fall now and a pastor. You look like a pastor. You know what? In the moment I had to remember that that was God's call in my life. And that was the purpose. I may not have felt it, but that's where God wanted me to be. That was the moment. That was the purpose. That's why he had me there. And as I looked at the outside, I looked like a pastor. <laughs> Whew, I looked like a pastor. The big part was knowing that Jesus was on the inside. That's what, people, that's what we're about. You know, oftentimes we dress up in ways that people can identify who we are by what's on the outside. And, and that's sort of pretty cool, if you will. You know, when I was a teacher, I didn't wear a jacket, but I ha- always had a tie, you know, and, and wingtip shoes. I may remember the wingtip shoes and, and all. And I looked like a teacher. And, and, and then I was in Fergie's one day um, before one of my softball games, and I had my full uniform on, and this little kid comes over, and he says to his mom and points to me, it's a real ball player. <laughs> you know, the only thing, that kid never saw me play, or he might not have said that. But he's a real ball player. You know, it's because of what I had on the outside. There was a time, too, Lisa, uh, when, when we first got married, and, and she was a PE person and everything, she and I would umpire softball games together. And, and in softball, when you umpired back in that day, you, had, oh, you were an umpire. Well, we went to Fergie's. We were getting a salad before our games. I know some of you look at me, and you go, does that guy ever eat a salad? Yes, I do. Um, but anyway, I, I, we, we were getting our, our supper, and she went one way, and I went another, and we got our stuff. And you remember back in the days, Fergie's, at some corner sometimes, they'd have you sign up for things you could win. Okay, there was this guy there who was there signing up. Now, I'm on the other end of the store, and Lisa comes over the guy and slaps him on the butt and says, There you are! And the guy turned around, and she was horrified. It was not me! And then she comes through the store, through the store so red she goes Blake Blake why weren't you over there like like it was my fault but slapper but anyway what was the problem the guy looked like an umpire he looked like me hat and He's writing here, she could only s- there. And she took a chance. <laughs> Why in the world would I tell you that story? Why would I throw my dear wife of 36 years under that particular bus? Because you're children of the king. It is important that how we are dressed on the outside, but it's far more important about our hearts on the inside. 
And I want you, I will encourage you, I implore you to believe who God says you are and what God has for you and what Jesus wants to do through you. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I am no longer a slave to sin, to foul language, to hateful attitudes, to bitterness, to unforgiveness. I'm no longer a slave because I am a child of God. I'm no longer because I am a child of God. No matter what the evil one or the world says, brothers and sisters in Christ, you are are a child of God and he has a purpose for you he has uh, the, the heart of other people that are broken and lost that they might find that new identity that you have found I imagine there's some of you in this room that you have friends from your past because you're a child of God where you once were not a child of God because you're no longer a slave you're a child you're a child you're a child of God Father would you send your Holy Spirit in this moment fresh and new Lord once again as a thousand times I've prayed anything that's just me talking Lord Oh, please don't let these people hold on to that. Lord, I pray that that which is true and right and real and rich, that these things we would hang on to. Father, my misspeaking and the laughter we came, but we don't want to ever enjoy our sin. Would you free us? We're children, your children, Lord. Empower us to walk in the new identity that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Is in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every again just who I am because I need to know Today I am love when I can't feel a thing and you say I am strong when I think I am weak and you say I am hell when I am falling short when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours, and I believe, oh, I believe, what the only thing that matters now is And I 
believe Oh, I believe What you say prayer time really in silent prayer unless you want to pray aloud with those around you feel free to do that as well Um, and then I'll I'll close with some some prayer time as I pray with you and over you uh, this morning thank you Lord there be any in here this day that you come in here thinking you're the worst of sinners there's no one in this room worse than you I want you to know Jesus loves you he cares deeply for you for those in here that need a new identity maybe there's some in here this day that, that have gone through an identity crisis and you messed up what you know Jesus wanted for you and well, I want you to remember who you are today. And I want to encourage you to receive that which Jesus has for you. Forgiveness and grace. Power. And joy for the journey. And so I, I invite you to receive that. Receive that. Lord, I want all that. I, I receive what you have for me, Lord. I, my, my identity crisis is over and I find I'm in you. I want to encourage you to receive that. I don't know if that's anybody in here, whether you need a new identity or whether you've been through Jesus and you look at the old past and the new is coming because of who you once were and who you are today. Um, I'm, I'm going to ask you, and the, the lights are really good today and you can see, I, I want to invite you just to come into the circle. Come to the altar table. If you want to receive Jesus or you, you're, you're so thankful for his grace, that, that you know him and you're a new you or, or maybe that you've come through the crisis that you've come through the crisis of identity and now you, you want to receive a fresh and a new your, your place as a child of the king so I'll be quiet if you'd like to just walk in I'm not going to call anybody out or anything if you just want to walk into the circle I know it'll take a little bit of effort but maybe the Lord's stirring you by the Holy Spirit so we offer that to you today Father, what we look like on the inside 
from the outside, Lord. We pray as faithful in the inside. We pray that what's in us will control us and how you look at us. Lord, there's days we don't even look at ourselves with anything but contempt. We're thankful with how you look at us and we praise your name. Lord, in these moments, we pray for those around us that have brokenness and have disappointment and discouragement. And we pray that they might find either a, a renaissance of new identity or, Lord Jesus, the identity that you have for them for the first time. For those that know illness, those that know brokenness of relationship, those that know brokenness of heart, we come before you, we name them in our hearts. We receive that that you have for us. Identity in our new purpose we would be a blessing that we would be a blessing Lord your word tells us that we have power we want to be spiritual superheroes in the name of Jesus for those around us that we might be superheroes of your grace so others that are fallen, broken would know your goodness would you give us courage to speak Lord would you give us courage to love would you give us courage to care for those that have such brokenness. These things we pray in the powerful name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand as we close our service? Who am I that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me in oh his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh it's free
saved a long time ago uh, when I was 27. Uh, and so thankful and so blessed. But this past year has been really tough on me. Uh, started out in September, like, pretty awesome. I get to retire in Longwood Gardens. I don't have to get on my hands and knees and work anymore. And my hips not taking as much pain, and I'm all better. A pretty big high. A couple weeks later, I have one sister that says, uh, tells me she has cancer. Her chances of going through it are not good. So the next problem I had, my other sister, Janice, uh, got told she has cancer. She has five le weeks to live. She passes. Uh, in the process, we put my mom in a, in a home, which we didn't want to do, but none of us could take care of her. And it was horrible, taking your mom to a home. And uh, it was really hard. So as that all kept going, just things just kept getting worse uh, for me. A couple people knew it, uh, close people, Jill, Mallory. Carolyn, small group. So I went through an identity crisis the last year. Break when he brought it up. Uh, come up and pray. My identity crisis by Jesus I've gotten better. Thanks in that. For anybody out here, smiles. There's a song out. I forget who sings it, but he sings like, oh, I'm okay. but really, he's not in the mm -hmm. And it's a powerful song, and that's what I went through the last year. Uh, you can smile at people, say, life is great. But I went through a depression. I went through to get pills. I went through all kinds of stuff. And I kept hearing my wife say, I want my Earl back. All the medicine, everything else did not work. Jesus Christ is the one that brought me back. So he is my identity. Even though I've been saved for a long time, I don't know everything. I'm not a perfect person. But I am a believer in Jesus Christ. And I will take that to my grave. Thank you. You bet. And Earl, I know you know this, but I'm going to remind it for everybody. You not only will take that to the grave, you'll take that way beyond the grave. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we'll know less days to sing his praise than when we first begun. Would you stand, please? I just want to bless you as you go. May the grace, back about the, the circle, feel free to do that too. Bless you all.